Cambridge, Massachusetts, anything goes. We hold it here each day, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And boy, we're going to dedicate some of this today to Anna and Ronnie. We're going to talk to real people about their everyday concerns about making money on that. I'm going to deliver a few stink bombs because I've been thinking I am so irritated at the delusions that people perpetrate on them. Oh, I'm going to have an internet business. Like hell, you say. You can't even figure out how to plug in the computer. Do you know that my computer is old, Justin? It was a peach. Justin has gotten me out of many scrapes. Even George likes Justin. So that, there is the high praise indeed. Justin told me the last time he came over to help me out. He said, you know what the biggest problem is that people hire me to do? To plug in the friggin' machine! They don't even know how to plug it in. <laughs> the cat the cat knocks the, 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 the out of the unit, and they oh, what's happened? Well, the cat gnawed the, the cord, and there you have it. And the whole damn shoot match stops because a cat eats a cord, as if cats don't eat cords every day. Ask Lance. Lance lost computers the other day because the cat was eating the cord. Now, if that doesn't show you and the rest of the world that these people can no more run a business than they can, than they can kill off the cockroaches, which are going to, which are going to live beyond them. You want to speak to this? It is outrageous. The people that come in here, and I think what you're seeing is, I, everyone said, Je Dr. Jeffrey Land, would you politically correct my innermost? Dirty damn, I'll be politically correct. I didn't get educated to be politically correct. I got educated to see the truth as I understood it. So long as I could support it, it was worth saying. What do you say? Things that upsets their feelings, you know? Feeling, their feelings, what feelings? They, they, they have no mercy coming in here and saying, well, no, we didn't watch the video. No, we don't have a dollars. No, we don't have any of this. No, we don't have any of this. And I feel like saying, all right, get out! It's going to be like a marvelous line. You remember during the Commonwealth of Great Britain in the 17th century, the famous line was, for God's sake, sir, go! And they wanted to get rid of Cromwell. It's a marvelous phrase. It was used in World War II. God takes and screamed in Neville Chamberlain at that time. For God take sir, go. Well, that's why I should go to a little to uh, more uh, garbage, editorial garbage I have. Well, I went through more than just anyone else. It doesn't change. It's the same old damn arguments. It's like being produced by the color kittens in the back room. Same old garbage that was used. Yeah. Like Queen Victoria and whatever used dogs by which to it's used and used to justify the unjustifiable. And I will say this. If I was the president of the United States, I would come forward and say, you know, I made a stupid mistake mistake and people died. That's on my on my soul. And I know the people that say, well, it's his job. It is not his job to be stupid. The Harvard man, he is, was educated right across the street from where I'm talking to you. So I breathe the same air that he breathes. Only he didn't breathe it properly. He went on a chocolate cake. Well, Chris, you see we're going to have yeah, a glorious program well, today. I'm exactly the same as you. I don't do politically correct. People don't like what I say. Tough. And if I upset someone, that's well, you um, take too much joy. Uh, I have to say, Chris, you don't, you don't protect yourself. Uh -huh. You enjoy it. And I enjoy watching you enjoy it because I really want it. The knuckleheads. <laughs> don't tell them the truth. For God's sakes, don't tell them the truth. Tell them some diluted version of the truth. When Ambassador well, Stevens the envoy to Libya died. I was, I can't even to, to, to tell you what, what mixture of emotion I took. All the pay, pay, pictures of Stevens I could find out of papers and things, and I spread them all over the house. I put them in every room while I wrote the article about his death. That needless death. You feel so 
handicap. Because these are supposedly the best and brightest people in the country and all that crap. But they're not. They're, they're fallible people who make terrible mistakes. In the, because the big picture, they have to save America. What's going to save America is what is always saving America. Our moral compass. So get whacked out. Uh, the same in this country. We have about 680 members of parliament. And of that 680, I think maybe four or five have any business experience or have any experience of anything other than politics, which they've done from school through college and university. They've never done anything else. They've been indoctrinated on what to do and what to say. And unfortunately, those are the people we got running with them. I want to ask you, before we go on to our more official program, somebody asked me yesterday how I would vote on Brenda. And I said, like my cynical point of view, I said I'd vote for separation, and I'd use that club to beat and squeeze money out of England and say, See, we're leaving you. This time I'm going to run away to the circus, and I mean this time. This time I really mean it. And of course, the, the separatists have got to hope that they lose by a percentage or two. It's close, it's dramatic, but they lost, which means they won. Because they don't have to then govern, they don't have to do anything, except mild platitudes. Tell me this, because I have not been following this referendum, because I have thought from the beginning, being that I am a Macmillan and a member of Scottish clans, as I am, and that I went to the University of St. Andrews, the patron saint of Scotland, I did. I thought that my fellow countrymen would be so stupid as to vote. Yes. And sure enough, the latest polls, tracking polls, show that the no's are well ahead. Well, of course they're well ahead. The, the, the politicians gather in a pub in the night and dolly the numbers so that the so that the yeses lose by the closest conceivable margin, thereby being able to tell the government in the UK saying. See, if you don't do it, it only needs 47 more Scotsmen. I'd be selling my vote in the best Scots tradition. That's the thing, one of the things that made Scotland great with knowledge of when to sell the vote. And the aristocracy. <laughs> they got so many deals out of it. Chris, what is the argument for separation? I have no idea whatsoever. It's just one man's fantasy, I think. But if they do get uh, the vote through and they win their thing, that will be the end of the Labour Party. Because about 30% of their votes come from Scotland. And then we'll be left with the one party, with the one party parliament. And that will no. do anyone any good. I've gone on record here <coughs> saying. The no's will win. I believe the no's will win by at least 15 minutes. And all this falafel will have just been to sell newspapers. And God knows the newspapers need to be sold because they're melting away like butter on it. That. <laughs> Got it. That's why they 15% folks, you heard it here first. Okay, we want to speak to Ashley, who's coming in. Ashley, us. You need to say hello to us right now. Look, as a Scot in good standing, very good standing, I might say, because my your ancestor Daniel McMillan was driven out by the clearances, or he went to Northern Ireland for a few years, and he decided to tell his nose about that. That wasn't a good plan, so he leaves there. And was, and this is in the the 18th century, he ends up going to Carolina where he establishes a plantation. The only resource that Scotland ever had, or has now, is not the three drops of oil, not sales of McGonagall's poetry book, but it is the brains of the people. It's the only thing that Scotland ever had, brain power. And it was exported lavishly, or let's put it this way. The Haute aristocracy, uh, the Argyles, and, and the Southern, Sunderland, Sutherlands, etc., made deals, sweetheart deals, like you wouldn't believe. It was get rid of those peasants. 
Anna, good day to you. Anna, We, you have been here seven times. I want you to meet Christian Ennis from the photo wall. And Anna, we are asking, you have been here seven times. Ashley, we need to, you need to come forward as well. Come along. Anna, are you ready? All right, Ashley, you must watch the video. You must, let's do it now. You must click on the green box and watch the video. And that's a fact. Do it now. Avoid the problems. Anna, are you going to join us today? That explains what we need to do. I'm going to bring in Anna. Or I want to know the reason why, my father used to say. Anna, this is Dr. Lance talking to you. Or is Jay, Dr. Lance, today? <laughs> well, are you there? Well, let me put it to you this way, Anna. If I don't hear from you for two minutes, I'm going to bop you right out of here. Because today is the day you're going to make a decision. You're going to have to live by it. To go, to go by yourself. You want to see more? Now what? Then go back and watch the video. You could possibly write that in good faith if you had to watch the video. And I insist now. You click on the box and you watch that video. As if you're like it on the internet depending on it. Do that. That's your call of act. Although you may wish to say to us, be acceptable for the moment. Oh, there isn't a company in the history of tell more about and services than World Profit. My God, only there must be millions of people tell you about and services. You want more? You want, you're like a pet? <laughs> where, where was I? So I've gone out on the record as telling you how the, the device is going to be in terms of those. Oh, brain power. I should, as, as my brain slips away <clears throat> due to the ravages of old age, the brain power that I once had. Scotland, if there hadn't been a Scotland with bright people but no resources whatsoever, there wouldn't have been a British Empire. Do you know that the, that the British Empire was administered at Scots? Overwhelming majority of government generals, generals of the forces, Indian civil service, foreign draw office uh, was Scots. And that's why you see the, the Scots have put every colonial dad that there is. It's a Scots, a good and high year. Well, what do you think about that, Mr. Chris? Did you know that? Did you ever think about that? that Scotland yeah. ran the air? Because they had nothing else, had no homes. Oh, I'm about to do some such tales. Do you? Yes, I, wa I was aware of that. Well, I just can't put anything in one here. I think I'll have to come up with a re. I think I'll have to make up some information and pass it off. I'll do it. Um, I'll Scots run the empire. And yesterday afternoon, never guess what I was playing. You take the high road and I take Scotland. And at that point, let's remember, folks, I lived in Scotland. There isn't a dry eye in the house. We get in about eight words. And then all the old cabinet ministers are sniffling into there. And the ladies are sniffling into that. And the young people are sniffling into it. Everyone is holding hands, which is what happens at the end of a ball. In Edinburgh, Burr Sterling was at Andrews. And there is not a dry eye in the house, so I came up with the idea. It's a, it's a, it's a kind of an analysis kit. You go out and you sing the song to people, and if they don't cry, they're not Scots, so they can't come to Scotland. It'll be an official program. Those words alone. Oh, now what you do? Yeah, we'll go look no, at the video. I said, uh -huh. 
Anna, Anna, we frankly want you to watch the video so you have a nodding familiarity with what you are going to need to make money on the internet. The internet is not a zero-sum game. Some people approach it better than others. If you don't approach it very well, you get nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, if that makes you happy, it doesn't happen to me. I'm not going to invest some of my scarce... Well, how many years do I get? 85, 87 and a half? Making a fool of myself over something that's not going to produce a result? Hmm. That's not my way. So, you take the high road and I will take... Hello. I'll play it before for the end of this program. Do you agree? Have you ever been to a ball in Edinburgh or in St. Andrews? If you lived in St. Andrews, I got in what's called the 19th Hole, which was a pub. It was right across the street from the which I came to know way more than I wanted to know. My father is a golfer, and thus starts the tale of his, of his poor son, a helpless golfer. My father didn't care so much that I was to be accepted at the years of St. Andrews. He cared that, that I was going to be across the street from the Royal and Ancient Club. Uh, uh, or, or, Ronald, you can stay and listen to us, but you're going to have to watch the video anyway, so you might as well get it out of the way. So my father is ecstatic that I've been accepted not at the university. That, that's the mere, mere paraphernalia. But the home of golf. Now there's something kind of working in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, I have the coordination of a dead dodo. I cannot, I don't know. I, I'm dyslectic. I can't tell left from right. I have little problems like that. I, uh, you are familiar the story about three drivers at, at age 50 by putting a ribbon on my right hand because I couldn't tell right from left and any other way. So I'm going to be like that. <laughs> so the lessons cost a shilling. A shilling lesson given by the pros of the Royal Major Club. And all the students of the university had access 24 hours a day, free, and by access, I mean, there's, not, there's no rope, there's no fence, there's no sign. It just says, <laughs> I don't know, you can play it over hours a day, which, we, which the students and the townspeople do did. And I would dutifully go down to the nets every week, every week of my lesson to appease my father. I said, this is hopeless and you know it, but I'll appease you and because I'll need a piece of points later for things that I want to get out of you, I'll do it now for you. So I go down to the nets. And this is what the infernal teacher pros says. You start with woods. Brush it along the ground, lad. Brush it along the ground. I couldn't figure out how to get the, the damn, uh, co uh, whatever they're called, club to brush the ground. I never pass lesson one. So all of you out there who will moan about you don't have this education, you don't have that, I flunked golf. <laughs> and I never saw a happier man. When there was a hurricane and it blew down all the golf nets, my, my pro danced a jig of joy. I swear he could have been Bobby Burns himself. He was so happy when he saw me and said, the lessons are off, laddie, the lessons are off. <laughs> you know, I, we're delighted to hear it. But, Every event, so everything in the towns of Scotland came from the towns of Scotland. There wasn't a lot of interchange, you know, with you, you know, get out of, you know, just get on a bus and go to the university and then go, for, oh, no, 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 no. You were in St. Andrews, you were in St. Andrews, which is a bunch of gray granite rocks covered by the coldest water on earth and golf, which you detest. But I did learn a lot about social customs and I, I saw the authentic Scottish tears. I thought, and I thought to, to myself, God, if the referendum does pass, it'll be because everyone remembers those words. I'll be in Scotland of all ye. Where you and my food never be there. On the long way road to Lock Well, so much. Have you ever been? Yeah, we're getting a good number of people in here. Let's 
help them out. Anna, it turns out that you are all the people that are coming in. Anna, you got to close those windows. Anna, what are you? You got your electric bill must be out of question. Calling Ronald King. Calling Sub Server Foudy. Foudy. Folks, if you can't, can't figure out how to open, uh, how to click on a link, how do you think you're going to run international business? Chris, please take up the torch. I'm feeling a bit like I'm going to be sick in a minute. I mean, people, they're the hubris. The hubris that is, that is on display in this place every day is unbelievable. They have about as much chance as I have of putting a little ball on the ground, hitting it with a stick into a hole miles away and running after it. Rushing along the ground, Chris. Rushing along the ground. <laughs> I didn't figure I out, I couldn't it. figure out how, how do you... Every time I actually did the damn all went someplace that you wanted to go anyway. I was it was a, it was a tossing game. <clears throat> what was what was better to, to let the ball get to hit it and then run after it, or just to miss it all the time? It was I mean, it was a fine point of the law. But have you ever seen you got a room six window windows like, open on it? The wind got us out like in the open window button. You'll be blown not, away with a draft. No, you're not paying attention to us at all. Hey, Ronald King, we'd like to talk to you. And Sabir Fidey, we want to talk to you. Anna. You know what? Let's just do something here. I'm a person of power and consequence to do things. See. And you're eating stuff. I haven't got any stuff to eat. No, no because you selfishly ate it all initially and didn't even put aside a single blueberry. So I had to go out and buy the blueberries at the, at the end of the season in plain price. I bought some blueberries yesterday and they weren't very good at all. All the way from well, all the there, there is a worst mistake. Anna, you don't quite grasp the position. You've opened ten. <laughs> let her, let her stay with the window. Let, let, let us, let us re get get a new perspective on the situation. She wants windows open. Let's all open a window for Anna. <laughs> now, now, Sabir, Sabir, we want you to respond here. Now, why was I telling you about the, oh, the, the brains of Scott? And the people who are extremely hardworking. I mean, Scotland has scenery. It has. Well, that's all very well and good. Whiskey. When you're driving around and you want to see a tree. Oh, the whiskey. Oh, now you've hit my father's second point. He's reading the information sent by the university. And he said, look, you can buy raw whiskey that will mature. Materialize that will be the university of these auspices. You can buy as many books as you want <laughs> that will mature in 50 years. Well, guess what, people? Now I'm at the 50 year point. I don't mean whiskey. First of all, I can't, I don't drink the whiskey anyway. So, then my father, three the reasons why he wanted me to go there. One was golf and necessity. We can even get an interesting picture of my father, the deacon of the Methodist Church. Perhaps he would have had a wild side after all. Ah, Brother now what we got here. Severe Fidey and Anna. Are you there? In two minutes, I'm going to remove Robert and I'm going to remove Severe. If you don't mind to us, we assume you're frankly, this really 
Robert, Sabir, Anna. Christopher, you can be the official turnkey and let him out. I'm with the Scotland's Scotland's totally on my midday. Who who the hell would put it there? I don't know. <clears throat> I think it was Judy A. Dallas. <clears throat> when I think of Scotland, I exhibited the traits of true Scott, namely these schemes of plenty. Scotsmen have schemes, and they need schemes. They don't have any resources, so they deal things with people. Or be near with a penny. Near. And I am near with a penny, and that's got to be Aaron. Near. So after I got myself elected to the student council, which we in touch with uh, Sir Larry Constantine, new rector coming in. The people on the student council didn't want to deal with all the other they have in some American. My God, diners of crumble, we have an American on board. And they wanted to isolate me so that I wouldn't have any influence on Scottish policy. Well, I didn't care about Scottish policy, but I, I had the role for which was, which was open. And they appointed me. They didn't really can, what sense for media can do with a, with a marvelous event as colorful and picturesque as that. Meanwhile, I commandeered all the tickets and I only gave them to my friends. <laughs> the oldest form of American electoral influence. Give the, give the, where are my tickets? Oh, give them away. You went there the day that we announced. Well, where was the announcement? Very, very small print. For all those who want tickets coming between 2.15 and 2.16 a.m. on the evening of February 28th. <clears throat> so I decided, as my next crew, that I was going to get uh, the four of us, and we were inseparable, and these four people. Uh, I was their leader, their spiritual, moral, and military leader, and they were the power. So and everybody knew where I was going. The Scotland Party was having its annual to do at Perth, and, and the chief speaker was Sir Alan. Well, I know this was that it was a very significant picture, personally, in the appeasement of the Neville Chamber. He was Neville Chamber in his principal private city. And as such, he knew where all the bodies were buried. And I wanted to meet him. Of course, I wanted to meet him. What's a good American boy if not out there hustling? So we, so we got ourselves elected, and I still don't really know how we got ourselves elected to the Conservative Party time, but we did. Four, four sets of delegates tickets, and you had to wear these elaborate thing, thing, things on your belt. And of course, on the opening day, I go up to Sir Alec, and he says, You are an American, aren't you? Well, my God, the man was swift. He just, you no know, pulling the wool over his eyes. But yes. And then he said, What are you doing here? This is the Scottish Conservative Party Congress. He said, I, he said, do you intend to vote? He said, sir, I'm a delegate. And the, the issue that year was nuclear proliferation, unilateral nuclear disarmament. And of course, I voted for, I didn't vote for unilateral, but <laughs> he said, you're going to be voting on national British defense policy. Are you qualified? Well, sir, I got myself elected. That'll have to do. What do you think about that? You don't go to I came up and all I wanted was an autograph. Late year, later, there is a there is an autograph of him uh, that I'll show you. Eh, you should have an autograph. Let's you see. Let's see the artifact. Heavy. Well, what would you see this beauty? This necessitates going back a few moments of time. The longest serving, uh, Christopher will know this, I'll ask me this question. Christopher, how, what was the name of the longest serving Dutch foreign secretary in the, in the history of the Netherlands? What was the name of the longest serving Dutch foreign minister? <laughs> 
ไกลเกิดอะไรอืมนี่คืออะไรอะไรฉันชอบดูสกูฉันชอบดูสกูร์มฉันไม่ได้ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉันแค่ดูสกูร์ฉ
that's a um, I was always when I was in Scotland, which I was there for more than a year, and I read up hither and yon. I was always hoping that I would see something more than a, than a tale of defeat, a romantic defeat. You know, Charles I slept here, Charles II slept here. It's always like the dregs of love. Especially about Charles II up in a tree, while his enemies want to capture him or under, the, under the tree. What the hell is it they know? Who's stories like that are so palpably, unless you have dimwits in the posse who are deaf and dumb, how could you not know that someone's in a tree over your head? <laughs> What about Flora McDonald, who put her arm in the lock so that she could save, give Charles a second, a few extra seconds to escape, and of course they broke her arm in several pieces. I mean, no due respect to her. I mean, it wasn't worth it. You can imagine the pain. And rowing that boat across the sea to Sky, that must have took some doing as well. I want to the sky because it was like, oh, it's so beautiful the sky, it's so beautiful. But I have to tell you this, I, years after I went to the years, I went back to Scotland and I was staying in Edinburgh one night <clears throat> and we went to you know, the bar of the hotel and said, what's there to do? This whole, this whole town is dead. That should have been last week, it was the circus. Well, that's last week. You should come next week. It's going to be the Tolerating Men's Little Show. But what about now? So we decided that Edinburgh was a city of not, I mean, there was no now. It was only the past, which you missed, and the future, which you were going to miss. And that was the whole essence of Edinburgh Chamber of Commerce Church Policy. It was completely ridiculous. Oh, um, there was a wonderful show at the Arts to William Metro. That's, that's one. You know, the, it, it, was, it was fatuous. When we were taking the flight Scotland from London, <clears throat> which in those dim distant days existed in pristine condition, it was a very properly uh, she was wearing tweed. She looked like uh, the white trustee of the bank. She had one of those dual, dual, cavernous faces. Yes, dual. And I was being my usual bubbling tell. And she turns to us and says, You'll find Edinburgh very racing. I thought she said racing. She said racing, and I said, I said I, "What? You got a, a, a sample red light district? What? Why am I going to find it so racy?" And she was <laughs> outraged that a proper Scots English was not better adhered to by a young man. No. <laughs> we are joined by Brett Tressar, Olivia, and. Asius, Emilio, folks, you're here to make money on the net. If anyone is here to make money, we need to hear from you. Brett, are you here to make money? Olivia, El Shas, Emilio, if you don't tell us you're here to make money on the net, Christopher and I are going to pop, just jump you in the, tr in the, in the trash. We need to hear from you. I'm going to give these these people two minutes to say the obvious that they are here to earn money on the internet. Learn how to do it. Brett, are you going to do that? Olivia, are you going to say something? Christopher, speak to them with your well-known way of rattling. Let's get these people to rattle, shake, rattle. Your names, Olivia, Isha. If you're here to earn money, we're here to help you. But if you want to learn how to earn money, go someplace else. Taking up space. And we need space. Two minute warning. I'm giving you a two minute warning to James, Olivia, and Alcius right now. If you don't say hello to us in the next two minutes, we're simply going to remove you. This gives you a good picture of Scotland. You know the Forbes family, which contains Malcolm Forbes, is one of his, was one of their ranches. They own a castle called Forbes Castle, which to this day has never been electrified or have contemporary plumbing. To this day, 
It's never had an, uh, one electric left. This is the aristocracy. Okay, so we're immune to the pen. Listen to these boogers that are bothering me. Olivia, this is it. You know what? Olivia, we're going to bite the dust. We're going to take, and the next one to be removed will be Alcitras. Dealey Hicks, I'd like to speak to you. Oh, God. William, you've been here more times than I have, so if you're here to join, join. If you're not, go someplace else. <clears throat> William Colcorn, you and I have talked in innumerable occasions. William, what's your story? I don't know. Ask. What tell you? Well, my adventures are proof positive that the rogue's progress can be done tonight to today. Nobody told me I could do these things. I just did them. And that's something that entrepreneurs need to learn to do. They need to learn to make the decisions instead of, well, what is my decision? You can get the equipment that you need. You learn how to make it work. You get your support team together. These people will have collect Effectively, not done one of them, as much as all of them done all of them. Yeah. It's a sad state of affairs. Yes, they just look like uh, sitting about doing nothing and expecting money to roll in. If you wait long enough, maybe it will, but I very much doubt it. <clears throat> money? The only money they're ever going to see is this, uh, this money that's fallen out of someone's wallet in the street. <clears throat> and they'll have to fight oh, me for that too, because I stopped traffic for, for <laughs> nickels. I couldn't believe that. I was notorious for, uh, when I'd invite people out for dinner, they always knew there was a catch. The catch was, in back of Wordsworth Bookstore, which was the biggest bookstore in Harvard Square, all the boxes, the book boxes, were thrown away every day. Every day, the boxes that I needed to ship my books were thrown away. So I organized teams of people to steal the garbage from Wordsworth. <laughs> now, it wasn't stinking official or anything. It was just boxes. So we had to, you know, flatten them, put them in the car, and although we didn't have any rides, uh, they had to camp them to our go through the boxes. Yeah, so they did a lot of slight labor. And Hatton and Rian and William Colcord. What we're going to do here, Chris, do you feel like making an offer because they are technically ready to go? I'm not sure if they're. Ready for anything? Okay, Olivia. Oh, Olivia. You have you've been here twice now. Olivia, are you ready to join our community today? Because right now, Olivia, I want to tell you flat out, you're being webcast to the entire world. This program is also being recorded. So you, what you do, what Hatton does, Rian and William, Coldport, etc., is all being broadcast to the whole bloody world. I mean, for the rest of history, human history will float out there via YouTube. Now, Olivia, under the circumstances, are you ready to join our community now? Olivia, all I require is a yes. If you say yes, you become a member of this community, and we reward you accordingly. If you say nothing, the rest of that is a no. If you say no, oh, we know that you're crazy. Olivia gone, and now her indelible footprint in the history of the universe will be a woman who cannot make a decision. It's your choice. She's done that. William Colcord, this is Dr. Ladd speaking. You've been here 193 times. William, what is your story? Reason. Well, Christopher, what do you want to say? I've harangued 
कौन वो उससे खुश हो My fingers getting sore pressing that remove button. I have to have a lot of that. Yeah. 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 And I'm going to tell you a story about Scottish justice. Oh. The house mother for for the 19th for the uh, old railway hotel, which was at the 19th hole, where I lived. Twice in my college days, I lived in old railroad hotels. Uh, was, uh, the house mother was a vehement anti-American. She hated Americans, <laughs> and she poor, and she she fed us. It was uh, something right out of Dickens. She made us eat mutton two two or three times a week. Now, if I look at a piece of mutton now, I throw up. I mean, I don't even think about throwing up. I just go right with the main event. Just fifteen minutes. Couldn't eat. anyone know what mutton is? You know what mutton is? I, I bet you. Mutton. I bet you haven't eaten mutton in fifty years. I love mutton. You love mutton. Well, yeah. one night mutton. this woman was hit on the head with a hammer and went into a coma. And I said, "Good riddance for bad rubbish." And one hour, Scotland Yard had me up as a as a fat as a, as a person of interest in the <laughs> detective murder case. Did you say? Did you thank goodness? I said, yes, I did. I did say thank goodness. Well, and why is that? Because she was trying to starve us to death. That was a Dickensian moment. Uh, please, sir, can I have some more? Listen, when Rob, Robbie Burns' day came up, I'm supposed to sing the Age of the Hags. First of all, I looked at the damn thing and it smelled funny, and I wasn't going to eat it. <laughs> and I couldn't eat anything else because there wasn't anything. Only whiskey. My total dinner that night was a dram of whiskey. No doubt, a wonderful whiskey, but somehow it was not considered to be adequate nutrition for a growing boy. You should just drink whiskey, in college, and nothing else. <laughs> They have meats and peas. No, no, I don't know about the leeks. Well, I'm sure. You think of the Llewellyn false fact. Leeks, leeks, and leeks. Leeks, are you spelling with an N? Yeah. What are they? Turnips. Oh, turnips. Actually, I I like turnips, so that's what. But a man cannot live by turnips, turnips and whiskey alone. <laughs> <coughs> 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 Tatties and leaves. <coughs> delicacy. Mm -hmm. As far as food is concerned, I don't think it is a Scots delicacy. I'm thinking now. I'm trying hard to think. As long as it's shepherd's nice. cottage pies. That's about it. Okay, here's another Scottish story for you. I wanted to go up and see Balmoral, and I've told the story before about the strawberry, but this is another aspect of that same trip. We were staying in a very, very nice, very 19th century Scottish hotel. It was on one of the new wings, and it was kind of buried in the mountain gray granite. It was very, it was very charming. Everyone was very British, including the person that was driving the car. Was there. There was a very attractive young woman. Well, young. She was she was probably forty-ish. She was dining by herself. So I told my friend, my ultra British friend, that I was going to go buy her dinner with us if she if she wanted. To. And he had the flaming roof. He said, "You can't do that. She's she's alone." I said, "That's the point. I'm going to ask her out of politeness." She says, "But she'll see it as polite. She'll see it as that you're in him." That you are a meddling American. I say, well, to be a meddling American, disgusting kindness is my goal in life. Would you, do Christopher, as someone who's British, first of all, he literally so he had to scrape him off the ceiling, and of course, guess what? No one's stopping me. So I go over 
And she said she's very appreciative that she would have come with us in the lab. So she made some family. She was actually charming. She lived in Cheshire. And I oh, met her husband who was uh, with the gillies out fishing. It struck me as a completely pointless activity. But they ended up inviting us to their home in Chester. And that was my proof positive that I did the right thing. What do you think? Was it, was it a proper thing to do? Was it a kindness? Or was it an example of American bumptious behavior? And don't think I have it. I've had to do this on a silver platter, so don't go for any chat. <laughs> uh, I'm not. Me, I'm not one for cheap shots. But, uh, I think you should have kept your nose in your kept your nose in your plate and in your dinner. <clears throat> See, now it it bothered me because I'm a you know member of the crowd. It bothered me that oh, the woman was sitting alone. First of all, I hate the eating alone. I really can't bear it. One thing. I always drop. I always feel I'm <coughs> dropping it in the salad dressing. You can tell what I ate when I was eating dinner by the chart or what was on the pages of the books. No, he he was right. Well, not as, you know, what can I say? I wanted a genuine big praise. Um, <clears throat> he was technically perhaps correct, but from a human perspective, it was grossly inaccurate. True or false? <coughs> Because you probably someone never went that strawberry too. If she wanted someone to eat with, she could have found someone to eat with. So, uh, well, she wanted she to did. eat with She did. Me. <laughs> well, I'll, I will go on record to say this, which is good kind of to set this in here. If, if you had the opportunity to meet an illegitimate, intelligent, good looking, Woman from a culture you were trying to study, and you found your current dinner companion a bigot, a frenzy bigot. You can't talk to those people there. It's like there's something in the Constitution of Britain that says uh, a man's home is his castle and get off the grass, Bubba. Well, what I would have done, oh. I would have. Picked up my plate and John said, Do you mind with you? Because I had up with that. <laughs> and that person may not have the most elongated span on this planet. He, would, he probably would say something like that. I could, now I'm, no, I'm going to go into it. I couldn't possibly have said that. He was driving the car. He would have left me. You know, and, and I would have a way to get back to Alright, enough of that first day. Jamie Cook. We'd like to welcome Jamie. Oh, the time has passed quickly. We're going to kick Christopher downstairs for a minute. We're going to have Miss Patrice Porter. You see, I've given you the perfect opportunity about an attractive, bright woman. Down and down. Now you can say, oh, if you were talking about Patrice, we all love her so. I gave you an opening. Unfortunately, I gave you too good an opening. <clears throat> Patrice is Let's see, this whatever his name is over there, Cornwall, and Scrapper yields the pulpit. You can come up. And, and we, uh, that was Christopher Ninnis. He, he might be back with some final remarks in a moment. We're going to bring up Patrice Porter from Saskatchewan. And good day, well, all. Patrice, we covered the, uh, <laughs> We're having fun. Covered the territory here. <laughs> Yeah, taking us to Scotland today. The, I've got a little bit of Scottish in me, the Macintosh name. So, so I, Macintosh is quite Scottish. Yes. <laughs> That's my grandmother, Macintosh. Well, we had a different kind of a program today. But some people shouldn't ask me questions about things about Yeah. They don't want lengthy and exuberant answers. <laughs> and it set the tone just before with the the wars and the blasting people away. That I'm in total agreement with you on that one. But the uh, we won't carry on. So if people want to watch the replay of this Anything Goes program, it's at now will be uploaded to our new World Prophet Tube, and I've 
put up a link there at www.worldprofittube.com and um, or the it'll be on the YouTube channel Patrice Porter and there's other replays on Pat Porter YouTube channel of the Anything Goes program that you can check out and if you want to check out my home business central <coughs> go to www.20waystoprofit.com and also uh, I help people to create abundance by gardening and that's at www.gardeningforfoodsecurity.com and with that we will be having our uh, video marketing class today so join in and you can come on out, over and with that I'll say my adieus till the next anything goes bye for now thank you thank Patrice Porter for all that she does. And I wish to point out that Canada, the Canada's evidence of the Emperor was largely organized by Scots. So we're gonna, uh, and we have a province called Nova Scotia, New Scotland. Just want you to know this. Uh, so where is your. That's where they're going to go. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not even going to begin on my Nova Scotia stories because they are interminable. Now, what, what is your, what your, would you like to sum up your presence on this earth here? Do we just go into the top of the hour? We're going to go over to do it all here. What thoughts would you like to share with the with the audience? <clears throat> my presence on this earth. I'm here to please myself and help other people if I can. Mainly to please myself because I've been pleasing other people for far too long. Oh, 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 here it comes. Oh, here it comes. The we had <laughs> ringing. Okay. That's not for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. So here is, here is our, our final comment about Chris today. He is uh, going about pleasing himself in ways that are social, socially immoral and politically incorrect. What a jolly, what a jolly right. this is on highways and byways in the United Kingdom. Do you have any last Everything comments before I? Like I... Is... Everything I like, like is text. Illegal, immoral, or fattening. Now that happy note, I'm about to go down. Anyway, my my last words would be far more practical than his. Come back tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Or anything goes. In all the days of good stocking was looked upon as something shocking. Now God knows anything goes. And so it does in the first thing that goes is me. And here's the deal. Make sure you tune in here to www.worldprofit.com every day. And God only knows what you're going to get. But it will be lively and it will be fruitful and of a universal point of view. And if you expect it to come with any uh, land products, it won't. I'm going to go down and we will start our